And good morning, everybody. This is Eureka Street Crypto Hub. It's Eureka John. Coming at you live at 6.03 in the morning on Monday, March 22nd, 2021. This month so far has just blown by. Um, and uh, so much stuff has happened in the crypto market. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting month so far. But um, I just uh, have been broadcasting every single morning since February 6th. And then broadcasting in general, um, kind of learning the ropes and pulleys of doing all this channel since October 24th, 2020. And uh, this has been a real fun thing for me. It's been a way for me to motivate me to get to know projects and get to know more about cryptocurrency, put myself to a deadline, put myself to a task and uh, get at it. And uh, this is the best way for me to do it um, with the way I do things. And uh, yeah, I'm not a professional and I'm just not shilling anything. And I'm not sponsored by anything. I'm just a guy who wakes up in the morning, looks at the crypto news and wants to talk about it. And in his spare time, researches projects to the best of my ability anyway. And, uh, you know, presents what I've learned. And then other people are very quick to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And then, uh, you know or um, tell me what they would like me to cover. So feel free to. There's my Twitter handle down there. And um, <clears throat> you can also contact me at Eureka Street Crypto Hub at gmail.com. I'm on Patreon. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram at Eureka Street Crypto Hub on Instagram. And um, let's see, on this float app here, I'm on this. Um, it's a new decentralized app, float.app, and then I'm on Patreon here, but uh, I, know I don't have any followers there. And then I upload my videos to Odyssey and to uh, library.tv, and I broadcast on Theta. So feel free to contact me any of those ways. Um, I have gotten a few uh, requests to cover some different projects, COTI token. Um, last night, somebody requested that on my... Uh, on my uh, YouTube feed, and I've never heard of the COTI token. I've seen just the acronym, um, the trading symbol, and that's about it. So let's see the price today: 24-hour value, 24-hour volume trading of 160 million 286.995 is the first enterprise-grade digital fintech platform, which eliminates all intermediaries and empowers any organization to build their own private payment solution and digitize any currency using our proprietary, proprietary trust chain protocol. Uh, provides functionality as robust as PayPal and Alipay while allowing enterprises to create their own unique rules. Okay, so it's kind of a payment system. Interesting. Uh, so that's the second payment system that I've been suggested recently. And then there's Avalanche, um, which I do have that on my uh, docket <laughs> to do a video on. So I will look into COTI and I will be doing a video on Avalanche as well. Avalanche is one of these ones that are trying to take the place of Ethereum, which I also, if you've been listening to me, I believe is never going to happen. I think there'll be plenty of room for Ethereum-like protocols. Uh, open source platform for launching decentralized finance applications and enterprise on the blockchain deployment to one interoperable, highly scalable ecosystem. They build on Avalanche can easily create powerful, reliable, and secure applications and custom blockchain networks with complex rule sets or build on existing private or public subsets. So basically, uh, it supports the entirety of the Ethereum development toolkit and enables millions of independent validators to operate as full block producers. Um, so uh, yeah, there's um, a lot of projects out there right now trying to compete with Ethereum, especially since Ethereum is dealing with all these gas prices and the slower transaction fees at the moment during its transition from Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0. Uh, I do know that the progress for Ethereum 2.0 is being speeded up. Um, optimism is being rolled out for rollups <laughs> as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I think there's going to be room for everything. And then uh, I was also suggested, uh, let's see, Terra Luna. And you know, I want to be taking a look at Terra Luna as well because I noticed, well, Avalanche has really been doing very well recently. And uh, then Terra Luna, I noticed, has been going inverse to Bitcoin. Every single time Bitcoin goes down, Terra Luna goes up. Um, and right now, Terra Luna is up 33.8% uh, in the past seven days. And it's been making some big moves recently. Um, let's take a quick look here. 
so it has caught my attention every single time I look and I, you know, I look multiple times a day but every single morning that I log on uh, I see Terra Luna and you know it's making big moves on the upswing whenever Bitcoin and the rest of the market tends to turn down so that's pretty interesting and so what's up Valera Rimarev um, let me give you a little something for tuning in I, I appreciate you logging on I've seen you quite a bit um, some um, actually starting to you know get a couple people that actually uh, I see in the morning they're up as early as I am or maybe they're in the UK I don't know um, so let, let me know where you where you're um, watching from it'd be I like to know where uh, people um, actually watch us from all over the world um, <laughs> I had a, a, a funny comment on uh, my YouTube um, somebody's saying out of the eight people that watched this video I was the one who actually pressed the like button and that's true, you know, like I actually am in it for the tech, <laughs> you know, like I don't have many watchers, you know, and so I am really thankful for the people that do actually watch, um, you know, it's, I don't know if it's voyeurism or what, but, uh, you know, maybe I do transmit some helpful information and, uh, you know, so thanks, um, you know, yeah, I'm definitely not in it for the likes or the mass amounts of listeners or the sponsorship or anything like that. I really am in it for the tech. <laughs> so here, 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 I'm keeping on trucking, man. Uh, one of these days I'll get my bearings about me. Um, all right, so uh, let's see here. Let's look at the prices for today. Bitcoin, $58,251.26. Still lingering right around there. And um, I'll get to this in a second, but I think it has to do with the potential uh, ETF that is supposed to be coming out and about five or six players, large players, institutional players that um, have applied for this ETF. And I think a lot of people are waiting for the outcome of that in order to see you know, what they're gonna do with their money. Um, Ethereum at 1807.65 also kind of going sideways. It was kind of a boring weekend, honestly, in crypto. Uh, for crypto anyway, you know, it's never boring. The market is always fluctuating a hell of a lot more than the stock market but um you know this weekend was just hey so whatever you know um i have a few days off this week i had a couple days off last week and so i'm really working hard at putting out some more content um so i should have my next video out pretty quickly hopefully i know i said that about my last video but that was you know a really tough project fetch ai was difficult the video to me i uh, could have done some things better but um it was what I had, so enjoy it. Um, give it a give it a watch. Uh, Cardano is a dollar twenty, um, pa up twelve point nine percent in the past seven days. I see uh, Junko from Chainlink, uh, not from Chainlink, but she's a uh, yeah. On Twitter, and she's always uh, promoting Chainlink. She's been going to war, talking about the uselessness of uh, Cardano, and it's been pretty funny to watch. And then Charles Hoskinson actually responded to her on Twitter. Uh, so she's saying, show me proof of an actual working smart contract on Cardano and I will give you $2 million. <laughs> so, I mean, to be fair, you know, she's got a point, you know, I mean, I invest, I, I hold Cardano, you know, I like Cardano and I do think it could be great, but you know, come on guys, let's get something moving, you know? Um, but they are, they're doing it at their own pace and they're not letting people pressure them into going at a, fa a faster pace than they're really willing to go right now. Um, so, yep, you get to see all types on, on Twitter for sure. Uh, Polkadano, 37, uh, Polkadano. <laughs> that would be an interesting project. Cardano and Polkadot mixed together. Polkadano. <laughs> anyway, Polkadot at 3770. Um, sticking right around there. It's actually doing pretty well. Um, I want to do a video on Polkadot. Uh, XRP. 56 cents. It actually did a little jump yesterday at a, uh, up 11.7%. I wonder what's going on with XRP. I've been seeing a lot of people saying relist XRP, hashtag relist XRP all over Twitter. Are they considering relisting XRP? Um, it'd be interesting to see, you know, and if those people that held out during this whole time end up, you know, buying gigantic mansions on the lake because of this, then more power to them, man. Uh, Y'all are, um, yeah more dedicated to xrp than i ever was so um 
you know, you pick your team and you roll with it. You know, that's kind of how it goes in crypto. And you don't dog on the other teams and the choices that other people make for the projects that they want to support. To me, a lot of it is just about your own personal appeal. People say, well, how do I get into crypto? You know, where do I start? I said, well, just start with some research. Do Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, and then from there, just branch on out and do some research, research, figure out what projects appeal to you. Um, you know, what are you passionate about? There's probably a project for you. Um, you know, I love Theta Network because I love video, I love broadcasting, I love movies, I love the whole concept, and therefore Theta Network really appealed to me. And it happened to be one of the best choices I could have possibly made because now it's sitting at 1021 at an all-time high. It went up 37.9% over the past seven days and almost 20% over the past 24 hours. Um, Theta Network is on a tear with uh, Theta Network 3.0 coming out. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, just find some project or team or something that appeals to you and just go with it. And, uh, you know, you will learn what constitutes good fundamentals um, you know, by researching the, uh, the use cases, the utility, the team and things like that. And, uh, you know, just try to stay away from cryptocurrencies that are there just for the purpose of making money. And that's it, um, because usually that kind of you know, seems a little uh, shilly, like you know, you know the types, you know. So yeah, uh, so anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean there are a lot of good solid projects out there. VeChain, if you're really into supply chain solutions, um, Filecoin, if you like data transfer type of stuff, Aave, if you like decentralized finance and lending. Um, you know, there's the virtual machines like Avalanche, Polkadot, uh, Cardano, and Ethereum, uh, Oracles, um, you know, Chainlink, um, Band, Tellor. Uh, so, you know, there's project for everything. IOTA is for IoT devices. Um, you know, some people like uh, decentralized exchanges. You got Uniswap and One Inch, as exchange aggregator, Bancor. Um, you know, so yeah. There's, there's something out there for everybody. Chili's is into the sports and, you know, football. Not necessarily soccer, but football. Um, and then uh, you, know, you got synthetics, which is derivatives, you know. And yeah, that's a, that was a super tough concept for me to understand. I did a video on it and forced myself to understand it. And uh, I think I have a pretty good handle on that now. But uh, it's a pretty interesting concept to think about people uh, buying and selling on synthetic assets. Um, that tracks the value of something else. Elrond apparently is named after uh, some kind of fictional elf. Um, so yeah, anyway, there's a project for everybody. And uh, you don't have to just marry one project either. You, are, you don't have to be married to a project. Just, you know, explore around like what I do. You know, just, you know, I, I love, uh, yeah, and then, or join a community. You know, a lot of these communities are very welcoming and are, um, uh, really, really, really want people to jump in and get involved in their projects. So, anyway, uh, let's move on. Um, Bitcoin. So, um, right here, there's an article. Bitcoin loses momentum after over the weekend after failing to break all time high. And as I mentioned before, I think that Bitcoin is, people are waiting to see what's going to happen with an ETF. Uh, so. Uh, on Saturday, the price began climbing back toward the 60,000 mark, which it has passed four times in the past week or so. Uh, pens were primed to proclaim a new record, but as soon as it peaked above 58,000, it came crashing down in an aggressive downturn that wiped nearly 2K off the price. Okay, 2K, whatever. That happens all the time in the crypto world. The price of the asset improved on Sunday, and at the time of writing, was only down 0.6 for the day. The rest of the market followed a similar pattern. Ethereum took a tumble on Saturday before climbing to 1780 at the time of writing. Right now, Ethereum is at 1808, and um, mid-cap projects valued between $10 and $40 billion, uh, 10, 10 and $40 billion suffered smaller losses with no currency escaping the sudden downturn. Uh, that, except for Luna, as I said, runs inverse. And then Theta Token, the decentralized streaming platform, continued its hot streak, gaining three places in the crypto market rankings, thanks to a 13% gain over the weekend. Now it's more than that. 
Uh, while the weekend was choppy, the emerging story this week is the long-awaited U.S. Bitcoin ETF. An exchange-traded fund is a type of security that can track a sector, a commodity, or pretty much any other asset. It can be bought and sold on a stock exchange, just like a regular stock. It's seen as a gateway for institutional investors to get involved in crypto as it allows them to speculate without having to buy and hold crypto. So that's what an ETF is for, for Bitcoin. So far, the ECE, SEC has said no. I like how they spell it the French way, no, to ETFs on the grounds that it is not transparent enough. But pressure is building and some are suggesting an approval is imminent. Uh, a month ago, Purpose Investments launched, launched this ETF in Canada. And that was the world's first one. And within a few days, it racked up more than $60 million in managed assets. This week, it's gone past $1 billion Canadian dollars. Over the weekend, Brazil followed suit. The first Latin American Bitcoin ETF, dubbed QBTC11, was approved by Brazil's regulators. And while undoubtedly impressive, the market watchers are waiting on an ETF to pop up in the U.S., there are now at least five applications awaiting approval by the SEC. There's Wisdom Tree, Van Eck, NYDIG Asset Management, Valkyrie Digital Assets, and Skybridge and First Trust. Is that six or is Skybridge and First Trust a one asset? Okay, all right. A decision is due on many of these within the next 45 days and could light the touch paper on Bitcoin surge up, up upwards. So the Scaramucci guy, um, he, he runs Skybridge. I see his name in the news a lot. I don't really exactly know. He's the former White House communications director, I guess. And so that's the whole big shtick behind him. I'll have to really uh, dig in and figure out what's going on and, you know, with Skybridge and Scaramucci and why he's so important because I have no idea. Um, another possible igniter of markets is the mountains of cash waiting on the sidelines of markets. As ex we reported bef before, there are billions sat in consumer bank accounts waiting to be spent once lockdowns come to an end. This same trend is happening in stock markets as well, according to Bloomberg. There are nearly $5 trillion in assets under management currently undeployed in any asset or market. Thanks to the poor performance of bonds during the pandemic, many mar money, mar money managers are waiting for a return to normality in the markets before pouring cash in. The theory goes that once the world returns to normal, money is going to be spent setting the scene for what is expected to be a bullish 2021 for stocks. And we argue digital assets too. Um, I mean, I don't think the world's going to get back to normal personally. Um, I think, uh, you know, people say, oh, you know, it's just going to be when the vaccine rules out, you know, everybody's going to take it and everybody's going to be going back to normal. No, uh, what they don't publish is that there are a shite ton of people that aren't going to be taking this vaccine. And um, it will split the world in two, in my in my view. And uh, we'll see what happens with all that. Uh, a lot of social unrest coming, and um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna get interesting. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, I'm not gonna give my personal opinion on this because I use this podcast to talk about crypto, not world events and vaccines and all that crap. So um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of it is riding on the Bitcoin ETF. Um, so, um, yeah, I got distracted in my thoughts. What would it take for the SEC to approve a Bitcoin ETF? I need to read that. Um, Latin America gets first Bitcoin ETF, Scaramucci. Okay, so a lot of stuff going on in the Bitcoin world. That's probably why it's, it's sitting a little stagnant right now. Um, I did want to take a look at... This article, um, Everything Theta, is, he's a really good person to follow on Twitter if you're into Theta. Um, he uh, really uh, knows a lot about Theta. So um, put, publishes some, and publishes, posts some really good um, articles and information about what's going on with Theta and some funny stuff too. So uh, he posted this article here, Theta Network and the Web 3.0 Revolution in Edge Networking. Um, I, you constantly hear me harp about, um, you know, how Bitcoin maximalists fail to see the potential and the, um, uh, ubiquitous nature of web 3.0 once it gets kickstarted and the eventual evolution of web 3.0 and all the shite coins that, um, are going to make web 3.0 work. So, um, to me, it seems very, uh, narrow minded to think that only Bitcoin is going to uh, survive and be the dominating factor in everything. 
because we have Web 3.0 and you can't build Web 3.0 on Bitcoin alone. Uh, Web 3.0 is often described as a convergence of several different emerging technologies, include AR, VR, 5G, IoT, blockchain, and AI. For background, Web 1.0 was the early days of the internet. Think AOL and Netscape, you know, dial up your informational page for your uh, car washing business. You got a few photos, you have some text, and that's about it. And, you know, just kind of a, a marketing splash page and, you know, just to tell people who you are, what you do, and how to get in contact. Um, Web 2.0 was characterized by the rise of e-commerce, mobile apps, and social media led by Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple starting around 2007. That is um, the ability to create your own page. Think MySpace. MySpace was really one of the first, in my eyes, uh, very concrete Web 2.0 uh, popular um, websites in which you would enter your data and it would go to a centralized server, then it, you would create your own content on the web page um, for the average user. You didn't have to really know HTML or anything like that. You just filled in the fields and you created your own pages. And your, your, So Facebook does this too. Um, eBay, uh, you know, Amazon, all that is considered Web 2.0 um, in which you work with centralized servers. And then, so now we have Web 3.0, which is decentralization, and it's one of the core. You, core so, uh, one of the main themes emerging for Web 3.0 is the goal of retaining the innovations of Web 2.0, um, the MySpaces and the Facebooks and the Ebays and PayPal's and all that crap. But putting the power back in the hands of the individuals by letting them control their own data and share in the benefits of the new technology. Decentralization is one of the core tools used to accomplish that goal. As power shifts from the massive global tech companies to end users and their billions of connected devices. Data network is one of the many protocols that will govern how these devices interact with each other in Web 3.0. Data as a protocol is a set of rules that defines and governs the interactions between these billions of users. Edge devices, which I have installed on my computer here, an edge device, um, and it's constantly running. It's actually not running right now. Let me go ahead and just get this edge node started. I restarted my computer yesterday and forgot to start my edge node back up. But it's easy to download. You just go to the thetatoken.org website, and it's just right there. You download it, and you can run it on your computer, and uh, you, know, you earn T fuel, and you can watch movies from it. You can broadcast from it. You can watch other people's shows from it. Uh, you can broadcast your own show. I'm not broadcasting from Theta Edge. I'm actually broadcasting from Theta Network streaming with a streaming key. But um, you can also run the, the cache and the compute modes. And the compute modes help uh, basically scientists do research on a lot of algorithms that they don't have the computer power to do. They allocate that computer power out to the individuals on the edge nodes for them to run uh, algorithms for them and send the packets back. Um, as completed algorithms and it just helps in general you're doing something good for society and you're getting some t-fuel in the process so it's all free um, anyway so it shows here web 3.0 uh, let's take a closer look at the graphics so it kind of starts with way down here I don't even recognize that one um, and you got Netscape uh, Facebook Airbnb Uber um, so this is web 2.0 here where you interact directly with a centralized server and then you have uh, Bitcoin coming in at the very foundation and uh, Ethereum, the first virtual machine and you can create smart contracts on it and it created dApps, uh, decentralized applications on the web. And so anything with a little, hold on, let me get this here. And you can install MetaMask here on your browser and um, you can work with, uh, through your website onto the blockchain and interact with the blockchain. And you have Maker, a decentralized autonomous organization, which is DeFi, the beginnings of DeFi, where you can lock up your Ether and get stable coins in return and then use those on the decentralized finance system. And now you have Ocean, which is a data marketplace. And I will be going into Ocean again as well. Um, I uh, really like the Ocean project and I've been following it for a long, a long time here and I'm invested in Ocean protocol so uh, I want to do another video here covering some recent developments on that um, so yeah anyway Theta's peer-to-peer -peer net uh, data uh, relaying increases the efficiency of delivering video streams and other heavy data data heavy applications making it cheaper and more effective than any other platform that moves large amounts of data 
Uh, video is an ever increasing piece of the data demand puzzle and has more video content moves from VR to and AR. This moves to VR and AR. This effect will multiply. Demands for data will continue to go rapidly. The need for an efficient edge network will be even more critical. But the future we envision is much larger, larger than individual platforms gaining some efficiency. It's all connected devices being used to form a global edge network, which is always on. Decentralized with nodes on the edge, close to users and incentivized via, via crypto micropayments rather than controlled from the top. And I could see in the future possibly AI participating in this and kind of the model that I demonstrated with Fetch AI. Um, everything running on nodes and the nodes all using machine learning to talk to each other. I'm not really sure if machine learning is, is uh, put into implementation here yet, but I can see that happen for the future. But, you know, a theta is more than just uh, relaying and sharing bandwidth and relaying streaming and stuff like that. It does have the capability for smart contracts on there and, and act as an Ethereum platform. You can put NFTs on there because I know that everybody loves NFTs right now. And then uh, you can mint your own tokens on there and I could have the Eureka token and uh, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. And then you can, um, uh, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff you can do on here. You can, it can do everything Ethereum does, but cheaper and faster. And they even have their own uh, swap platform where you can swap back and forth theta, theta, uh, tokens on the Theta platform. So interesting, good stuff. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's the, everything Theta. Um, back to Bitcoin, I did have something I wanted to talk on and touch on before I log off here. Um, a guy I follow, Digital Asset News, um, is a great website um, and a great um, uh, YouTuber. He's actually learned more from him in the beginning than I did any other YouTuber. So I'd recommend you follow Digital Asset News watch his YouTube channel here. I'll go ahead and open the link in the channel. Um, he's got a bunch of very basic instructional videos and he has Dan teaches crypto and I will link that as well. Um, this is him. His name's Rob. His name's not, not Dan, which confused me for a while, but, uh, you know, he talks a lot about news and, you know, he's, it takes a very conservative level headed approach to a lot of this stuff. And I appreciate his take and he's safely, initiated me into the crypto space. So his YouTube channel is great. Um, so he does take a more conservative view on some things and uh, he did take a little conservative view on, uh, let's see here, on Bitcoin right here. So here's a thread. Um, it could possibly be prognosticating some kind of retracement or major not crash because it's just all part of the cycle, but some downtrend, a bearish trend in Bitcoin for a while. And, um, you know, I want to be all bull, 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 you know, let's go, go, go. Uh, just like Ivan on tech, but, uh, can't always be like that. Um, let's see here. So, uh, Tim, this Timothy Peterson person, I'm not sure who that is, but, uh, said Bitcoin large addresses have declined the most ever in both absolute and percentage terms for a 40 day period. Such moves are often, but not always associated with bear markets. The second largest decline occurred in the 2014 bear market, third largest 2018. So here we go. Uh, large addresses have declined the most ever. So when large addresses seem to decline, it kind of signals the beginning of a bear market. So interesting stuff. Number of balances with uh, greater than $1,000. So not really, or 1,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm sorry. With 1,000 Bitcoin, that's a lot of money. So uh, when those decline, it seems to be kind of rolling into a bear market. And then it goes back up, and then bear market. So when that declines, there's the price, that declines. When that declines, there's the price, that declines. So, you know, I'm not the best person to, or even hardly qualified to talk about TA type of stuff. And I never really... Uh, poke into it, but this is pretty interesting and I need to sometimes take a bearish look on things just to uh, uh, keep my myself grounded. Um, now here's the Pi cycle top indicators very close to intersecting again. Each time we've seen an intersection we've experienced a significant correction from the macro trend. Our current cycle seems to reflect the 2013-14 cycle in which the intersection occurred twice. So let's see here. Um, not really sure, you know, how this does this, but uh, apparently this line, when this line crosses, 
there's an upshoot and then it crosses again and apparently things go down. <laughs> I'm so bad at TA. Yeah. All right. So, you know, anyway, just if you can read that, then that might make sense to you. It makes, probably makes more sense to you than it does to me. But uh, I just know to never take for granted um, uh, bullish trends and, you know, uh, embrace it while you have it. And, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, be thankful for what you have every single day, right? That's the lesson to take away. Um, but, um, yeah, so um, give a Digital Asset News a subscription and a follow. Watch his videos. He has his website. Um, Dan teaches crypto.com. Yeah, Dan teaches crypto.com. And uh, everything's free. I think he takes donations, but he doesn't demand them. And uh, great place to learn about crypto for the total noob. Anybody wanting to start in and get their feet on the ground and figure out where they're going to fit in in the crypto space. I tell some of my skateboard friends who I've talked to about crypto. And I said, think about jumping into the crypto arena if you're new to it. Like trying to figure out what type of skater you want to be. There's all types. There's freestyle skaters. There's your dirty concrete guys, there's bull skaters, there's flip trick guys, you know, um, there's people that love handrails, people that only carve bulls, you know, so, um, same thing in crypto. There's people that are attracted to certain types of projects for certain reasons and everybody kind of picks their style and what they want to go with. Um, so yeah, man. Anyway, that's about, that's about, uh, that's about it for the day for me and I'm going to go ahead and close out and get my ass to work. So you guys have a good day and um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hit me up on Twitter or YouTube or whatever the hell. Um, Eureka Street Crypto Hub at Gmail. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.